How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Conti and Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> the first time they go offense, they take Jordan Love. <laughs> they take Jordan Love. Listen, Matisse Thibel will lock up. Uh, the <laughs> CP3. Oh my God. Chris Paul. Oh my God. Chris Paul, baby. Oh. Right, Will? Nope, I totally disagree. Like, look. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Conti and Nick, episode 16. Now we're live again on the Bench Sports. I'm with Nicholson, and as always, I have with me Gino Conti. Gino, how are we doing today? Oh, guys, guys, an 18-wheeler fell over on the highway. <laughs> I'm going to be late. Oh, my God. He's going to be late again. <laughs> oh, Not my again. God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. It's good to be here actually on time and not have to rush in screaming fucking me, Yudoka. So, <laughs> so uh, how, how are we doing today? Good? We're doing good. Yeah, we got uh, we got a little NBA to talk for you guys today, a little NBA offseason uh, specifically. But uh, before yeah. that, yes. <laughs> before that, we we have a little debate that we have to do uh, as always. Not as always. It's gonna be real. It's gonna be it's, quick. It's as always for me and Gino every single year. Uh, we had a little fantasy draft last week, and you know, I, I it would be a shame if we didn't discuss or debate who has the better fantasy team. So Gino, I'm, I'm gonna let you uh, kick it off right here. Oh, you want me to go over my team first? Yes, yes, yes. All right, so first of all, very appropriately, Mel Conti is my team name, <laughs> okay? It stands for excellence in drafting. It stands for being an expert and just showing up everybody. So let me start off. My quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, okay? I don't know mm -hmm. if you can get much better than that. Yep. <laughs> Alvin Kamara and J.K. Dobbins are my running back duo, all right. okay? I think that J.K. Oh, – we all know Alvin Kamara. I don't have to say anything. J.K. Dobbins, I really think, is going to be – huge a huge part of this offense this year i mean look at it he's the number one running back in a run heavy offense and that run heavy offense is run heavy because it works okay that's true <laughs> robert woods i think is a guy who is rock solid at the receiver position and with somebody who can actually give him the ball i mean i'm happy with that mm -hmm. uh, cd lamb i think is poised for a breakout season because dak is healthy and he even did pretty solid when ben denucci and Garrett, uh, gilbert were throwing <laughs> him the football <laughs> okay oh, yeah. tunyon boomer bust i understand but when he gets streaky not a lot can get in his way you were a big robert tunyon guy yeah. last year yeah you were. and and the scheme is fit for him to be wide open down the seam okay jamar chase bit of a risk there Okay, because if Jamar, if uh, not Jamar Chase, if Joe Burrow can get can't get the football out in under a second, then you know they're in trouble. Uh, Jason Sanders, one of the best kickers in the league. Miami's defense, I think, is really solid. So you want to do benches, or are we just doing? Uh, uh, just like starting? browse over the bench quick. Okay, you know, just and, okay, and, and the, the, the the big bench player. The bench, not the network that we're on. My <laughs> fantasy football bench. We have Tua. Gus Edwards for insurance. Zach Moss, I think, can break out. A.B. is, I think, you know, high upside, uh, low downside. Got him in the 13th round. Chase Claypool, I don't know how he fell. And Michael Pittman, I think, is poised to break out this year as well. I, I don't disagree with that. All right, so we'll move over to, to my team real quick. Uh, <laughs> I had the ninth overall pick, so I kind of I kind of got screwed. However, there was someone who fell in my arms at number nine. You guys aren't going to believe. I'll just say his name first, so... My, uh, my team, the Golden State Willies, uh, this makes a lot of sense if you're in the league last year. I was the eight seed, and I made it all the way to the finals, so I kind of rebranded to... Who, cru who crushed your dreams in the finals? It, it was Gino and Alvin <laughs> Kamara, all right? I, I played them in that six-touchdown game. It was bad. However, this year is going to be different, but yeah, the, I kind of was reminiscent of the... Uh, the We Believe Warriors, and I, you know, my name is Will, so we're the We Believe Willies. So this year, Golden State Willies, because we're taking it <laughs> to the next level. I got Kyler Murray, Saquon Barkley, who fell to me at nine. I don't know why. Well, I know how that happened, but man, Cam Tate, John Bro, tripping. Tripping for not taking him. Actually, they had like the first two picks, but still. No, Cam Tate had two, and John Bro had six. He okay, took yeah, so, oh yeah, so John Bro's tripping. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> then I got Antonio Gibson, Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay, Mike Gesicki, who's like an eh tight end, but hopefully he'll have a good year. Curtis Samuel, I got the Steelers defense. And then my bench is like eh, but I do have Raheem Mostert, who I think I'm going to play for a flex. And I have Corey Davis, who I got with my last pick, and I don't know how. That guy's a wide receiver one, and he sat there forever. So that was like my my steal, I guess, of the draft. Well, real, real quick before we get into our actual NBA talk, um, we ran a poll on Instagram. Who has <laughs> a better team? There was 21 total votes, and 16 went to me. 
So, I mean, it's not much of a debate. I think everyone knows at this point that, once again, Conti is going to repeat as oh, the champion okay. of his league. <laughs> you said that this year is different, but it's not really because when you face me, I still have Alvin Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully he doesn't have a six time. You know what's funny? We were so ready for that game. The, the championship game like we, we like made graphics for it and shit because me and Gino were excited yeah and uh and then it's over like because uh Camaro was a Thursday night game right yes so he, was, he was played on Christmas over. yeah it was over <laughs> it's over on Christmas so I was like well <laughs> Merry Christmas Merry Christmas I was like Gino's played two guys and has like 80 points like, what am I in a non-PPR league like how am I gonna come back and I almost did I only lost by like 15 but still you know it, it, you hate to see it so yeah, th- that was our whole uh, fantasy football little spiel here. But we're going to go into a little look ahead of the, the NBA season and just talk about some stuff. And uh, I know Gino's got a little rant uh, prepared, so Gino? Well, so I think that Kawhi Leonard is probably the most selfish player in the NBA right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, well, you want me to explain. Okay, so <laughs> a couple years back, if you've been living under a rock, Kawhi Leonard was a free agent. And he had the choice which were the two favorites of the teams like to pick him up to go to the L.A. Lakers to join A.D. and LeBron or go to the L.A. Clippers and face uh, A.D. and LeBron. Okay? Kawhi Leonard chose to go to the L.A. Clippers. However, however, it was only because... to me. It was only because he went to the GM, the owner, all the management, Doc Rivers, and said, give me, Paul George, mortgage your entire future or I am going to go to the Los Angeles Lakers and stack the deck so unfairly that the league won't be able to compete. I don't think that's that unfair, though. What? I don't think that's that unfair. You don't think saying to a franchise, give everything you have, give up your entire future to give me what I want, or I am going to unfairly stack the league. He just won a finals by himself, though. It wasn't by himself. Pascal averaged 20 in the finals. He, he the year was, before. oh, come on. You, you saw the playoffs. You know, he was the main guy he, on that team. Okay, I'm not no, gonna. no one thought that Toronto was going to be good. They're like, oh, maybe they'll make the playoffs and Kawhi's going to dip. Which, yeah, he, he did leave. But also, he won the championship, the first ever uh, internationally, I believe. Because I don't think Vancouver won anything. No. The first for Toronto. And, and that's big. And then, you know, he wants to go to LA. I think mean, he wants to market. And, you know, cold weather in Toronto might not be. Uh, you know, Kawhi's favorite thing is I believe Kawhi grew up in, in California. I, I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's going back home. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't fault Kawhi for, for going back and wanting a good team. And also, instead of Paul George, I don't know if you saw this, it was almost Russell Westbrook yes. for a little bit. Yes, but here's the thing. My, my thing, like I, like I just said, was he went to a franchise and essentially held them hostage. He threatened to ruin the league and shift the balance of power so bad that if the Clippers didn't do what he wanted, then that's it. Like, the Lakers would have been guaranteed to win the championship. It would have been on par with KD joining the Warriors unfair. Like, it it would have been horrific. It would have been bad for ratings. It would have just been... It wouldn't have been fun. Okay? It it really and truly would not have been fun. Okay? Like, what if James Harden, say he was a free agent, said to the Rockets... Give me what I want, or I'm going to go to Brooklyn. And then he actually followed through and went to Brooklyn because Houston didn't give him what he wanted. You know, we'd guy, all be, we'd for, all be, we'd all be just was, For a guy who was held hostage, that GM looked really happy on signing day. I don't know. Oh, well, well he, of course. He, did not, he seemed very excited he was able to get Kawhi oh, well, and what? Is, is he going to, when the cameras are on, is he going to put on the frown? He was very animated. He was, like, jumping up. and Because oh, Kawhi was number two and uh, PG was 13. He made him stand with the jersey to do, like, the 213 area code for, like, L.A. or whatever it is. Oh, how corny. How, how much of a feel-good <laughs> he, moment. He is a, he's for sure corny, but, hey, if, if you're an owner and a GM and you're that excited about getting two players, I don't think that you were held hostage. Also, I think the whole Kawhi to the uh, the Lakers thing was, was kind of... You know, a few. It, it was like, oh, like it's it's out there, and you know, people were talking about it. I didn't think there was any chance. I thought it was either Toronto or the Clippers, because that's what we heard. He doesn't want to go to the Lakers. He wants, or you know, oh, maybe he wants to. No, he was never gonna go to the Lakers. It was like, oh, does he want to go back home and, and go to L.A. or does he want to stay with Toronto? I, no, I really dude, didn't there, think there were serious. There were serious reports about him, like in talks with the Lakers. You know that, right? Like there were legitimate talks about him like going to, and it wasn't. I, I don't think it was ever gonna happen, man. I, I, I didn't I think would, there was any chance. Well, 
Well, when when you when you threaten somebody, when you threaten, I, I don't person, think I don't think there was any all, threat. But Kawhi doesn't seem like a very all, threatening man. Kawhi, I can't get behind Kawhi, this Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard, Well, you do. You ever heard the the saying that the silent ones are the ones that you gotta look out for? Because yeah, they're the most like, dangerous. Come on, silent, man. But it's silent, Kawhi. Silent, silent but deadly. It's Kawhi. Man. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean it's Kawhi? He's he's Kawhi, silent to the media. He's Kawhi, not silent to like teammates. Kawhi Leonard emasculated the Los Angeles Clippers. <laughs> He emasculated the Los Angeles Clippers, and I'm not joking. I'm not joking. He, they, Shai Gil J.S. Alexander. Look at what he's done. Look at what he's done for the uh, for yeah, the he's Oklahoma been great. City Thunder. He's been fantastic. He's been great. That piece would have been just fine. He would have been just fine with him uh, with Kawhi Leonard, and they wouldn't have had to give up Paul George because you know what, Paul George. I'm sorry, like I'm not trying but, to sound like you're not why, that guy. But why wouldn't you get Paul George though? Because you got an All Star look, look at what they had to give up. So isn't Shea Gilgeous Alexander? Yeah, okay, but look. And look, then look. five first round picks. All right, but the, the thing with like five, oh, that's yes, so much. Yes, you have Kawhi. You just extended him this summer for another five years, I believe. Four or it might have been four. He's not going to play this upcoming season. Wh- why? Why? What? What's? He's hurt. His, his, oh, his is ACL. He? I thought he was coming back this season. I was like, no. brought, okay, so he's not going to play this season. But still, you have three years of Kawhi Leonard and probably Paul George. It, they're not going to win the damn thing. The, hey, dude, they were the best team in the league for a good amount of time last year. And it looked like a little bit for this year. I think the Clippers have the potential to win. They just haven't been able to put it all together yet. And they're not going to. I'm telling you, the Clippers are now under the mercy or at the mercy of Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard made the Clippers his bitch. And because he was selfish, because he was selfish, he had the team go his way. Okay? He said, give me what I want. Give me what I want. No, he's Kawhi am- Leonard. He's okay. a, but all, but I, I, I can't get behind... This narrative of like Kawhi is some some mastermind behind the scenes and like being like oh and if you don't do this I'm gonna ruin the league. Well, he I, did. I, he, I can't see it. I can't he legitimately see it. was going to go like to the Lakers. I don't think so. He, I'm, I, I'm I being think if serious. it wasn't the Clippers, it was the Raptors, man. Okay. First of all, first of all, first of all, yes, he want he, he did love the love that he got in in Toronto because they treated him like a god, even though it was only one year. Like, the, the Raptors know that they're not some big premier free agent destination. So, Toronto enjoyed what they had of Kawhi Leonard. But, realistically speaking, if you're going to extend... I mean, Giannis is the only exception for somebody who extends in a small level, like, small, small market franchise. Okay? Toronto knew he was on his way. But they really, really loved him. And they said, thank you so much for the work that you did here. And thank you for bringing us championship hardware. Yeah. That's going to be with us forever. Okay, they knew he was gone, and he. The reports were he wanted to go home, and the and the question we all asked was Lakers or Clippers, and legitimately there for for a time it looked like it was going to be Lakers, and and I'm not joking. And guess what? They had AD and they had LeBron, and I and I'm telling you, it would have been on par, maybe arguably worse than when KD joined the Golden State Warriors. I don't, it, it, would, it wouldn't. Nothing's going to be as bad as that. Well, it, it, well, that's why I said arguably. Just, just the story, the storyline of like, oh, they beat him, and now he's he's joined. Like nothing's going to beat that. All right, but let's let's say okay, the Lakers like were Kawhi's like number one or number two compared to the Clippers, right? I don't I don't see Kawhi as the type of personality to go, hey, if you don't give me all of this, I'm going to do this. Well, right, I I don't see that. Well, what then? What then? What did they do? Did the did were the Clippers proactive and just decided to get Paul George? Or did I think Ka- so. Well, no, because Kawhi well, Leonard, okay, Kawhi Leonard demanded obviously. Paul George. Yeah, you know that, right? He was like, okay, like I want to play for the Clippers, but I'm gonna need help. Let's go get another star. They was get, Shea they Gilgeous signed, Alexander they, another star? No, definitely not at the time. Are you kidding? He was Com- compared to Paul George. Yeah, the, the if you have Kawhi, you don't want to develop players. You want to get. All stars, superstars. That's so what Paul George is. He's a big time player. And look, I, I have not been the biggest fan of Paul George, right? What he's done in the playoffs has been really, really bad. He's had good moments, but for the most part, it's it's been <laughs> uh, playoff P, right? Play, way he's, off P. Way off P. He's, <laughs> he's been way off P. However, I, I do think that Paul George is a good player, and I still think that this team can work. But I mean, at the time, if you're Kawhi, you're like, hey, give me. Paul George, and then you know I'll I'll sign here. It's like okay, this or get me someone. I think it was get me no, someone. No, he wa- he he was adamant that it was Paul George. Yeah, it could have been Westbrook too, though. Because oh, listen, the time events goes. Kawhi signs to the Clippers. Trade happens, right? For Paul George, it could it could have been really anyone. It's just like the Russell Westbrook trade was almost buddy healed, right? Like it can things can can change like that. But it, it was Paul George, and I don't think that's holding 
a team hostage. I think that's just, oh, like, I want to compete for a championship. Which, like, is, that, that's what you guys want. You want a championship. I just won one. Right? It that's is holding a team hostage when you threaten to ruin the league. I don't think he was threatening to ruin... See, that, that's where I disagreed. I don't think Kawhi was like, yeah, and if you don't do this... I'm going to go to the Lakers. <laughs> Evil laughing. <laughs> As he's stroking a cat in a chair that goes 360 degrees. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't think that Kawhi was, was out there saying, hey, like, if you don't give me, if you don't give me a super team, <laughs> I'm going to ruin the league. <laughs> and I'm done doing that. But <laughs> oh, man. You, you get what I, mean? I don't, I don't think that that is in Kawhi's, nature because he's just a quiet guy if you've heard any other teammates of Kawhi, they all respect him they all really like him you know even though he's he's kind of a quiet guy to the media it's apparently not like that as a as a team we've heard in the locker room he was saying uh, after they won the first home game against the Warriors Kawhi said you know f it let's get both so you know I think Kawhi is more of a personality than we maybe see in the media but I, I don't think he was pulling the strings back there well, for I'm, the Clippers. I, I'm telling you, he was. It's, it's, it's <laughs> a it's a funny narrative. I will say, I don't think it's true. I, well, I, I like that it's a narrative you're running with, but I I, I just an, don't think it's, it's true. a narrative that now a lot of people are starting to run with. I don't think so. Believe me, it's not just me. <laughs> I think it's just you, Conti. <laughs> if you know if you know Dom Hausberger, he agrees with me on this. Oh my. Tom. Okay, Dom agrees with me on this. We were sitting down at Warren's the other day, and he and he, it, me it was me, Jake, Cam T. And Dom. Me and Dom were absolutely roasting and absolutely destroying <laughs> Cam Tate in the argument. Okay, because we were Dom, right. we're going to have a talk at Buffalo Wild Wings today, my guy. <laughs> have a little chat. But anyways, okay, whether the offseason antics go on or going off, like, regardless, okay, Kawhi Leonard was having commercials when he joined the Clippers. He had all these advertisements, and he had a crown hanging off the mirror, pretty much indicating, I'm coming for your crown, LeBron. The new king is in town. Yeah. And then he We loses. bought it. We all bought and into no, it. No, I didn't buy into it. I bought it. No, because want to know why? He lost to the Denver Nuggets. And you know what? There's no shame in losing to the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, but when you team at the right but, but, but when you completely mortgage your future, everyone and their grandmother was looking forward to that Lakers versus Clippers matchup. Okay? Everybody wanted to see the Battle of L.A. Who was the better L.A. team? Who was the supreme talent? Who was the supreme organization? And you know what? Kawhi couldn't even hold up his end of the bargain he couldn't put go through with his demand of Paul George where they gave up an all-star caliber player and five first round picks and they lost they came up short to the Denver Nuggets like I said great team but we all knew who was supposed to win that but, matchup well, okay? right, but it, it was a COVID year it was in the bubble no that was two years ago that was two that was two. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, I'm bubble, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. The the Denver Nuggets loss was in the bubble, right? And before that, we were saying like, oh, like this. They well, no, like the no, it wasn't. The no, it wasn't the bubble year. Yeah. No, when it wasn't. The Nuggets. Yeah, it was. No, it was the year. No, it was the year before that, right? No, the the, bu- no, the, the bubble year. Like 2020 is when, because after the 2019 season, Kawhi signs to the Clippers, and then they start the season normal, and then it gets canceled, and then they finish in the bubble. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. I, no, I, it's yeah. all good. I, sometimes I get my years a little messed up. It's all good. Okay. So yeah, that that was a bubble year. That was an NBA bubble year. And look, it, it was a weird year, right? Like I don't don't get me wrong, I think that one hundred percent LeBron deserves that ring in the bubble, and if you call it a Mickey Mouse ring, I I think you're 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 off something, right? It's still a championship, he still had to go through the heat I, I don't who were hitting who were hitting their peak, right? But if you're Kawhi Leonard, like yeah, it, it fell apart in the bubble. It, it happens, right? You blew a 3-1 lead. Doc Rivers was not the answer. He keeps on blowing 3-1 leads. I don't think that's a coincidence. So you Love think Doc. that Doc, Rivers, Doc, Doc Rivers is the problem there? It, it's, it seemed like it, right? No. No. You have Kawhi Paul Leonard. Paul George also didn't play good. Kawhi have, played good. Come on. You have, I'm, not saying, good I'm not saying Kawhi didn't play so good. So how is he not holding up his end of the bargain then? Because you win. Good. Because you win. He did everything he tried to win. No. He, he tried no. every listen, single time. If you're that dog. His co-star didn't play good. Listen, if you're that dog, if you're that man, if you are the guy that everyone promotes you to be, you find a way to make it Kawhi versus LeBron in the playoffs. I'm sorry. Like like I said, no shame. Denver Nuggets are a good team. Okay. They're a really good team. I like where they're going. When Jamal Murray comes back, I think they're going to be dangerous next season. Okay? We weren't looking at them at that light before, uh, a couple of years ago. We weren't. Yes. Okay, we weren't. We were looking at them as an ascending team, not a right now contending team. Mm. There is no excuse and there was no reason not to face LeBron in the Western Conference Finals that year. Okay? I don't want to hear anything about the bubble. Basketball's basketball. 
Okay, you're in Florida. Hey, I mean, you're, T- you're relaxing. T.J. Warren was going crazy. Yeah, man. like it's possible. <laughs> you're relaxing in warm weather. Okay, you're by the poolside every single day. You stay in a first-class resort hotel in Disney World. Okay, you have everything catered to you. Anything that you ever wanted was made available to you. You were living the life. Yeah, you know what? It, it sucked you didn't get to see your family. And, 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 I, and I understand. Okay, like, I'm with that. Yeah. But at the same time, everything you ever wanted was at your fingertips. All you were asked to do was roll out of bed and play basketball, which you decided to do the second you grew up. Okay. Kawhi Leonard should have been in the Western Conference Finals. There is no excuse whatsoever he for should, it. I, I agree he should have, but I mean you can't you can't you can't underline that Paul George played bad, right? Paul George played bad in that series. He choked multiple, multiple times, he wasn't hitting the shots, and Jamal Murray went crazy. And I mean that's that that is to me the NBA bubble. I mean it's not it's not discrediting like should the Clippers have won? Yes, but that's how the bubble worked. People like Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson and Jamal Murray. They looked like Reggie Miller out there, man. In the play, it was crazy what was happening in the bubble. And that's that, like that's what happens, right? But if you're Paul George, you can't make a shot, and Jamal Murray's dropping like 40 on you. I mean, that that that's you can say the bubble then. Like that is the bubble. That's that's what's happening, right? So they run it back this year or the next year. Kawhi gets hurt. And they were good. They were in the Western Conference Finals, man. And it For the looked, first time in franchise history. Exactly. And it, it looked it looked good. And that's why I say signing Kawhi was worth it as well. I first think it was a mistake. History. Come on. Dude, if you're the Clippers and you've had these bad, te- these underachieving teams, like really, really underachieving, like the, the Lob City Clippers in like 2015, those were super underachieving teams. And you have some eight seed teams. And you get Kawhi and Paul George, that's a W. That, that's a win for a franchise for sure. And like, look, Not if they don't win nothing. They, they're getting close, though. That's the thing. They're getting to where they, they they want to be, right? Okay, but here's the thing. When you get Kawhi and you get Paul George, you're not supposed to be a team without a ring three years in. Okay? You're not. Well, they're, they're two years in right now. This is going to be the third year upcoming. They're only two years that's, into the Kawhi experience. Well, well that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. So, like, that, that's, not what it, that's not what's supposed to happen. Okay. That, that I, I promise you the goal was to win that year. Yes. And it didn't happen but there are there are circuit there there was a global pandemic that ever hit everyone i don't like, want to hear that but that <laughs> it's the I truth don't. see that there's legitimate arguments on why the clippers didn't win there's legitimate arguments to say that okay Kawhi got hurt this year right he got hurt terrence man overachieved and paul george actually played good versus utah I believe, yeah versus utah and then against oh, it was phoenix right to get to the yes it was against phoenix and when you play against, and then you don't you don't have Kawhi, Paul George plays bad. That's a legitimate, you know, argument to be like, okay, this is why we didn't win. Like this is an excuse. Like okay, we didn't have, we didn't have Kawhi Leonard. Easy. That's a done deal. We were playing the Phoenix Suns. They were hitting their peak at the right time. It, it was good, right? Last year, NBA bubble. Jamal Murray goes crazy. Paul George can't play good again in the playoffs. It, those are legitimate arguments for okay. I don't think it's a it's a type of thing where it's like all right, let's blow it up. I mean, you fire you Will, fire Doc Rivers. But. Will you you just said that you bought into the fact that you thought LeBron was gonna I'm sorry Kawhi was gonna take LeBron's spot as the king of LA, right? I thought it was gonna. I, 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 the, Did the you whole, not say that? Though? The whole king, like, oh, who's the king? It's like I could really care less who's the king of LA. They're across the country from me. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it was the battle of LA that I was ready for to see these two just ultra superstar generational type players just going at each other. The bubble didn't stop LeBron. Yeah, it didn't stop LeBron, but also LeBron was playing out of it. it the bubble changed everything, right? LeBron and played as the same guy. LeBron didn't change. And LeBron I hate James LeBron, and I hate James, to admit it. Okay, but, <laughs> but Kawhi, LeBron, yeah, but Kawhi we, still played good, but, but, but Kawhi's still playing good. Up on no, but we're, we're not talking about the, the, the superstars should be superstars no matter what, right? That's what they are, and I agree with you that. Like, Kawhi Leonard should be Kawhi Leonard no matter what in the bubble. And he was. He was. He played good. But it's the, the role players is what change in the bubble. Like I said, you have Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero looking like Reggie Miller. KCP is going insane in the bubble. It's it's all it's it's crazy what was happening in the bubble. TJ Warren looks like Michael Jordan. It's it's insane what was happening in the bubble. So I think you can legitimately write it off to okay, we couldn't win in the bubble. It was the COVID year, you know, that that's that you know, whatever. Doc Rivers is king of blowing three one leads. It's what happens. Fire Doc Rivers. Bring, I don't even know who their new head coach is now. I totally forget. It's Ty Lue. 
Oh my god, yeah. I was like, I knew it was so all right. So you bring in Ty Lu, who, you know, <laughs> D-Lo D doesn't like, and I agree with D-Lo. Ty Lu is, she just kind of rides these superstar teams. I think he's a good locker room manager for sure. But, uh, yeah, so you get Ty Lu, and you have a regular year. Kawhi gets hurt in the playoffs, and they were looking good. They beat the Mavs when Luka was going crazy. We can't forget that. Paul George had his game. No, oh, they good. beat a one-man show. Congratulations. <laughs> and they took him six games to do he so. He was a pretty hard one-man Congra show. He congratulations. Was a, he was a really good one-man show. They, we should not Very give, we should not give the, the Clippers credit at all for beating the Dallas Mavericks because, first of all, they won by the skin of their teeth to a one-man show. I think that, more than anything, and in the first round, nonetheless, I think that, more than anything, should tell you everything you need to know. This Clippers team is not ever... Under Kawhi Leonard and Paul George going to win a championship. You know, you got to remember, though, at the, when the playoffs were starting, we predicted the Mavs to win. We even what? said, we, I, yes, we did. We no, even, I didn't. Yes, we did. No, I will I find didn't. the clip. Yeah, we, we, it was both of us. When we were doing the playoffs, we were like, oh, the Mavs oh, are going oh, to the Oh, against the Clippers. Okay, yes, against yes, the Clippers. Yes. I'm sorry. I thought you meant it all. No, oh, okay, no, 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 no. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. But yeah, we, we predicted the Mavs to win that versus the Clippers. We said the Mavs were the favorites. They're in their stride. Luke is going crazy. And then the, the Clippers win, man. I mean, that's. Well, in, well, in our a man, perspective, a man can only carry a team. For can't so change long. the narrative there. A man can I mean? only carry a team for so long, and then all of a sudden, you know, Luca gets exhausted because he's doing everything. Okay, maybe a team that has more than one guy just might be able to squeak by Luka Doncic. Okay, I'm not giving the Clippers any credit for back-to-back -back years barely beating. Barely beating the Dallas Mavericks, okay, okay, and they still beat. They, they, give, they still had to win games. Give, you know what I mean? give Kristaps Porzingis like healthy knees, and I'm telling you, I am telling you, that's the extra piece that Luke and Eden and the L.A. Lake, uh, Clippers would have been sent home both years in a row. You can book it. Okay, and fine. I right, so you. Dallas Mavericks should have won. Whatever. What about the one seed Utah Jazz? Fine. That was, a, right. that was a collapse. Win. That was a collapse on Utah. I predicted Utah to win the championship, and I was dead wrong. Okay, fine. I'll give him credit for that. I will give him credit for that. That's fair. And you know what? Okay. Kawhi goes down. I don't I don't know how much of a loss. I don't know how much I can really kill them for that one. Okay? Yeah. But you know what? Still, they, they lost. And they still had, like, reasonable depth. Like, Reggie Jackson... He was playing out of his mind. Okay, like I, I knew Reggie Jackson was like a solid scorer. I knew he could do like some things here and there to help out the team and be like a good contributor. He put the team on his back a little bit. Like Reggie Jackson for a bit there was playing like an all star caliber point guard. Playing out of his mind. Okay? They finally had the role players going and they didn't have Kawhi. Okay. And that like that's just unfortunate. And, 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 real, and real quick, because I don't want to be on this all day, okay? Because yeah. it, it frustrates me. Well, we're closing states, man, and then we'll go to Russell Westbrook. Side. It frustrates me to no end, okay? <laughs> You're starting a franchise. And you know the famous saying, the team takes on the, the attitude of its best player? Yes. They hitched their wagon to a guy who not only demanded they get somebody else who he wanted specifically or else he's joining the team, they not only did that, but they hitched their wagon to somebody who load manages. So it's their best player, all the Clippers look at their best player in the time of need, in times of like when they're, when they're struggling, in times of struggle. And they see he's sitting on the bench because he doesn't feel like playing today to preserve his energy. That is not a winning play style. I don't care who the coach is. I don't care if it's Doc Rivers. I don't care if it's Ty Lue. The best player on the team is a man who chooses to preserve himself and not stand by his guys all 82 games of the season and not motivate his guys, okay? That is a recipe for failure. That is a recipe for failure. No wonder why he wanted to join LeBron in AD, because he didn't want that responsibility again. He had the hero, like, he had the label of hero in Toronto, and he accepted it, and he stepped up for one season because he knew, and the fans would kiss his ass. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but reasonably so, because they know that was their only chance to win a championship. Okay? Kawhi Leonard is not a winning mindset. He sits out games, and it is ridiculous, and I'm finally glad that the media is starting to really take a look at him, take a good hard look, and say just because you're quiet doesn't mean you can't be held accountable for your actions. I'm glad we're starting to call out Kawhi Leonard. All right, uh, closing statements, I guess. I mean, Kawhi Leonard is an NBA champion, multiple-time NBA champion. Duke can flat out ball, and I, I can't buy into this narrative that he was he was helling them, holding them hostage. Sorry, <laughs> the, the Lakers. But, I mean, look, Ka Kawhi 
It's been real unfortunate. The Clippers aren't going to have a shot this year. I just looked up his injury. He's gone for most of the year. It's been unfortunate. I mean, we're going to have to see, right? We're going to have to see with this Clippers team because Kawhi's had a couple of leg injuries now. It's you know, it's, it's not looking too hot, but we're going to have to see not this year, but next year. Right now, it's not looking good for the uh, the Clippers, however. All right, we have another player that <laughs> it's slander season, though, right? <laughs> no, yeah. I really don't think it's slander season, but it's someone I have some questions about, okay? Okay. So, are you aware of the NFL wide receiver? We're not talking NFL, but I'm, this is just as a good beginning. Are you aware of the NFL wide receiver, Brandon Cooks? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Do you Brandon know how Cooks. many times that man's been traded? A lot. <laughs> yeah. Are you not starting to get those vibes from Russell Westbrook? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit, yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. So my question with Brandon Cooks is, well, Brandon Cooks and Russell Westbrook, how much of an impact do you make if you're constantly traded? Like, how much of a positive impact on the team long term do you make if after a year or two they decide to get rid of you because they feel as though their team would be better when they get your compensation or would be better off just with you out of the locker room. How much of a positive impact do you really make? That's my question on Russell Westbrook. What do you think about that? See, look, I didn't think Russell Westbrook had a chance to win a championship since he was on the Oklahoma City Thunder with Kevin Durant. Has not had a shot to win since. He had, you know, well, actually, you know what? Maybe with Paul George and Carmelo Anthony, right, he has a shot. Not to with make Harden? The- no, no, I don't think so with Harden. I, I never thought that was going to work out. Simply because they're both ball dominant, I didn't think it had a shot. However, in OKC, he had the Carmelo Anthony team after, and uh, Paul George team after uh, KD leaves for the Warriors. That was an experiment, didn't work out. You know, they Melo started to make his way into a bench player, wanted to be a starter, didn't really work out. Then, after that, you have, okay, the Russell Westbrook, Paul George show, losing to Donovan Mitchell. Not looking good, right? Still didn't think they had a shot to win this year. Donovan, gets, Donovan Mitchell before he became a superstar. Yes, which was it was like on the rise. I think. I, yeah. Dude, D. D. Mitch, ever since like he was in that rookie of the year campaign, you just had to be like, man, how did this guy go 13th? Yeah. Right. Don, Donovan Mitchell's insane. Hidden gem. Hidden gem for sure. Okay, but Hart, uh, sorry, Westbrook gets traded to the Houston Rockets with James Harden. I never thought that was gonna work. Too many ball handlers. Too many ball dominant guys. It's it didn't it didn't seem like it was a good thing, right? And also, I hate the way the Houston Rockets play with James Harden, all this PJ Tucker, it's Eric Eric Gordon, PJ Tucker at center. It was bad. It was real bad. I didn't I didn't like what was going on there, and it, a change had to happen, right? You ship Russell Westbrook with Bradley Beal and a whole bunch of you know developing talents, and you know I didn't think he had a shot to win there either. Now Russell Westbrook goes to the Lakers, and it's the first time he's had a shot to win the, a championship realistically since he was with Kevin Durant on the Oklahoma City Thunder well I don't think that I th- I honestly think that Russell Westbrook phenomenal phenomenal talent yeah. okay I'd say honestly a top three talent at point guard at all time talent okay, okay at fair. point guard okay I mean ever since Oscar Robinson nobody did a triple double in a season or average a triple double in a season and he did it what like three years in a row yep. that's that he deserved that MVP yeah. he definitely yes he definitely did deserve that MVP but Russell Westbrook, let's not forget, he's somebody who when the moment gets big, he's in crunch time. He just decides to take it upon himself, take it in his own hands, and really just takes over to the point where it becomes a one-man show. Okay? It becomes a one-man show. He really just, you know, and the whole entire defense knows, and he still puts up the numbers because he's he's an absolute freak. He's a menace. Okay? But... Is that going to fit in the L.A. Lakers system? Because first of all, like I understand that LeBron does want to move more towards an off-ball role yeah. in the L.A. Lakers, so they're going to need a point guard. Okay, but a point guard like Russell Westbrook, somebody who really and truly, like I said, when the moment gets big, takes over, that's not going to sit well with LeBron, I don't think, and that's not going to sit well with A.D., who already is unhappy because his minutes are going to be all at the five position at the center, and he's been on record saying he doesn't he like it. Center. He hates playing center. Well, still have Marc Gasol, right? Well, yes, they but I mean... Marc Gasol at the five. Hey, I, I don't think A.D. plays center, actually. Just because of that. I think A.D. should play center, but because of that, I don't, I don't think so. He said so many times he doesn't want to play center, which is like... I feel like he's shooting himself in the foot there, right? This is the modern NBA, right? Like, you want your power forwards who can stretch the floor, floor to play center for floor spacing, well, right? AD it's, can stretch the floor. Yeah, but that's why they want him to play center. Because they want your power forwards that can stretch the floor well, to I'm, play center. Oh, okay, no, okay, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, okay. I misunderstood what 
what you said, but but here's the thing. I, I honestly think that this like locker room, obviously, yes, is led by LeBron James. But do you not see something that could potentially go wrong? Like I said, Russell Westbrook takes it upon himself to really prove that he is the man, to prove that he can win the championship in these high leverage moments, and then all of a sudden the ball kind of gets taken away from LeBron and AD down the stretch. Do you not kind of see that happening? Because I'm not saying it's guaranteed, like, sign it, it book it, it's going to happen. But I, I think that's a real possibility. I think this is actually, and look, I haven't been a Russell Westbrook friend. I think this is the best scenario possible for Russell Westbrook, actually. Because, look, you have AD, who, you know, he's not a ball-dominant guy, but AD's looking to score the ball, right? Russ is looking to assist the ball. It's like half of his his game, right? He's looking to, to play make for, for others. You have LeBron, who's wanted to play off ball, and LeBron's a LeBron, right? If there's anyone who Russ is going to defer to, it's going to be LeBron. However, LeBron wants to play more off ball. And you have Russell Westbrook, who wants the ball in his hands, he wants to go to work, and he has two, you know, all-stars, superstars, really, to work off of, right? You have AD, you have LeBron, I think if you're Russ, if you are Russell Westbrook and nobody else, if you are Russell Westbrook, this is the absolute perfect scenario for you. This is what you want, and this is your chance to win and put up numbers, right? I, I think this is his his real shot. And if it falls apart, man, we got to take a. I've already been taking a hard look at Russell Westbrook, but I mean, we need to take a deep look and really start asking ourselves, like, is he a top five point guard in the league? Well, well, is he? Well, well, speaking, you know, well, speaking of shot. Okay, this LA Lakers team, role players aside, won't be able to shoot the three. They will not. You ask what the biggest <laughs> opponent, what the biggest obstacle of the LA Lakers is going to be. It's going to be the three point line. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. Okay, it's not going to be like the Clippers. It's not going to be the Bucks. It's not going to be the Heat. Not going to be the Celtics. It's going to be the three point line. Okay, like I'm not saying that AD is a bad shooter, but do you want him being like the best shooter out of your big three? Probably no, not. <laughs> LeBron James can get hot from the three-point line, but he, I'd say, is a average to slightly above-average shooter. Yeah. Okay, Russell Westbrook. I wouldn't, I wouldn't criticize you if you said lo- that Russell Westbrook was a bad shooter. He's a bad shooter. Okay? <laughs> I think he's, he's I shooter. think he's below average. Okay, but very, very close, teetering on the edge of being a bad shooter. Yeah. And if in in sense and when you said that he's a bad shooter, I don't blame you for that. Yeah. Okay, I don't blame you. I'm not going to criticize you in the slightest because it, it could sense. very it could very well be true, and maybe well, and maybe I'm just tripping a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing: if if your role players are the best shooters on your team, I think that's trouble, man. Like I understand you have three superstars, and everyone's like, oh, look what happened with Harden, KD, and Kyrie. All three of them can shoot. All yeah. three of them can shoot. That's the thing. I mean, and you don't really have a guy in their prime. Well, yeah, a- AD at the center. But like I said, he's not a sharpshooter. Okay? Yeah. Your role players at this point, Gasol, who can shoot but is way past his prime. Okay? Yeah. Dwight Howard. Horton <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tucker. Would you like me to say if Dwight Howard can shoot, would you like me to diagnose his <laughs> no, shooting? No, no. I think, I think I got the idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talon Horton Tucker. He can he can shoot okay, yeah. but I'd say he's more of a big scorer. Okay, Malik Monk, he, he his game more relies on athleticism. Kendrick Nunn can shoot. Yes. Okay, I'll give them that. Kendrick Nunn can shoot. Other than that, I mean Melo, I mean he's more of like a volume mid range shooter, so it yeah. takes him a little bit to get going. So and and he is past his prime too, but he can still put up twenty on his best days. Okay, he can still be that scorer, but it's more of a mid range game, yeah. and we saw that a bit more in Portland. Okay, so I I. I do think that the Lakers are going to be better, but how like is their shooting is going to be a problem? And I think Russell Westbrook, along with him just being able to take over, and I won't call him a ball hog, okay, because I don't believe he is. But with him really getting that mindset, like I got to do it on my own, I got to do it on my own, because that's what he's been conditioned to think. Even though he's been had amazing teammates, I can list them all for you. <laughs> I he think that I think that's his mindset he's developed, and I think that can hurt the Lakers going forward. Yeah, see, this this Lakers team is confusing, right? Because you have a lot of guys who are like a, a question mark. I feel like, like, oh, is Russ going to be able to work for this team? It's like, oh, can Marcus Saul still hold up? Does LeBron really want to play? He, he didn't. Ball? He didn't hold up last year. Exactly. I'm sorry, Marcus Saul is done. He's just a body taking up space at this point. And I hate to say that because I love the grit and grind Grizzlies. Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, Marcus Saul, I'm sorry, is just a shell. Okay. It, that's what it seems like, right? Yeah. But when we're looking at this Lakers team, it's 
it's a lot of what ifs i feel like and i'm very excited to watch this team not because i'm like some crazy lakers fan i'm a the celtics fan the exact opposite but i'm excited to see what is this lakers team gonna look like it's it's gonna be weird you have a lot of guys who aren't known for shooting the basketball but are are really good at scoring down low. Yeah. I feel this this is gonna feel like a nineties team, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> there's not gonna be a whole lot of shooting oh. besides oh. role players. Oh and, and and my apologies, I forgot to bring up Wayne Ellington and, oh, and, yes, and yes, Kent yes. Basemore. Yes, yes. I'm yes. sorry, Will. I'm and, sorry. And those are your shooters. <laughs> <laughs> those are their shooters. And so much that's... respect to Kent Basemore, because I actually do like him, but I mean, this is the L.A. retirement home, okay? It like, really is. Like yeah. like I said, I, I think I'm going to go back to the question that I started this off with. How much of a positive impact do you make on a team if you are constantly and consistently traded? Okay? And, and I'm sorry. Like, yeah, you can say, well, he's with LeBron. He's with AD now. But that doesn't change the fact that they had to trade for him because Washington was unhappy. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm not going to say they got the best compensation because Kuzma, KCP, and, and Harrell, I mean, they're all solid players, okay? But it's not I, – I really don't think it's because they really felt as though they had a better chance to win with those three guys. I say it's more so they needed compensation because they wanted Westbrook out of there. Yeah, and no, I, I think the Wizards in general just wanted Westbrook out, man. It was – you know, I think the Wizards know that they need to rebuild. But I do think that Russ, if you're Russell Westbrook, you went to the best scenario possible. And I think this team is really the big, like, what if is going to be Russell Westbrook, right? Because you gave up some of that really good bench depth that you had to get Russell Westbrook, right? So you're saying, okay, we don't have a good bench to, you know, maybe play with LeBron and AD, but we have Russell Westbrook. So it's all going to be, okay, can Russell Westbrook perform the way the Lakers want him to being that kind of MVP, you know, type Russ, not maybe not the numbers, but the playmaking, the ability to to score and get to the rim, the defense, rebound, all of those things are going to be super important, and they're going to look like a '90s team, and it's yeah. going to be really fun to watch. And, it. and and just for a record, if you're listening to this and think I'm hating, I'm not hating, but I just have my. You're doubts. asking questions. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hating. I have my doubts though. Yeah. Okay, like I said, I know the reputation. And I know how he can has the ability to just get so it's my way or the highway, put his head down, just get complete tunnel vision. And that concerns me. I really think that this down the line, like as the season goes on, could really hurt this Lakers team. It could, yeah. It, it could. It's like I said, big, big what if for this team, right? It's going to be a lot of question marks. I'm excited to watch that person. I'm really excited to watch the Celtics too. Just got uh, Dennis Schroeder. Excited for that. Very excited for that. We needed a point guard because Marcus Smart, you know, did not look like the answer starting there. You know, so it's it's good to see the Celtics are making moves. Real quick, is he going to be off the bench and play his strength as a six man, or do you think he's going to start? He is not. He's going to start for the Boston Celtics because we're going to go offense and buckets. I put yeah, okay. It, well, it's only six mil, so <laughs> I guess we'll I guess we'll I guess we'll manage. Yeah, right. I I put that in the uh, the sports group chat last night. I think the starting lineup is going to be Schroeder, Brown, Tatum. Uh, Horford Williams, and I think that's that's buckets and that's defense, and I think that's what you want from a starting lineup. Yeah, Elwin, and just so you know, I, I told you also about Romeo Langford. He's going off. Oh my god, <laughs> this is now where the Romeo Langford show begins. I can't wait. <laughs> I, I am excited though. I'm very excited for the Celtics season because we, we've seen the the past really quick as we're ending. We've seen the past team for a couple of years now, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen, like, oh, you know, scoring point guard, and can it work with Tatum? It's like, no, now it's the Tatum and Brown show, and it's it's time to go to work. I can't uh, wait for them to be in the Eastern Conference Finals just like they were a couple days ago when we are running in place. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait for that. Uh, so I think, you know, as we're winding down the, the final 40 seconds here, I just wanted to say uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. We love doing these live shows for the bench. Uh, also, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, all at Conti and Nick, and uh, yeah, it's it's been real. Uh, we appreciate you guys hanging around. Shout out John and the, shout out John and the Dirty Boys. I see you guys in that group chat roasting me. So hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you everyone for listening. It's been real. I'm Will Mickelson here with Gino Conti. This has been Conti and Nick. Good night. <laughs>